Hello, hello, hello. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> I had like some audio issues. I couldn't hear the uh, audio from the video, but I knew it was playing. So, but anyways, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to the trip. Uh, as the comments say, Ugh, first loss of 2024 could be the worst loss of 2024, depending on how we do. But uh, yeah, Arsenal had a bad, a bad weekend. We had a could have had a good weekend promising but then arsenal wasn't able to do what they needed to do um yeah it was um it was it wasn't good and we'll get into that tony how are you doing uh so so stormy weather body aches <laughs> yeah as we said that's my yeah, di di disappointed with arsenal mm. Over the moon about what Thunder getting number one seed, so kind of a mixed bag, but yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I'm still above ground, so there you go, there you go, Spencer. How are you doing? Doing all right. Uh, looking forward to Wednesday at this point. Um, it's a decent day here in Virginia, can't complain. Um, yeah, happy to be here. Cool, 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 cool. All right, so we'll get into it. Uh, how'd this game go? I guess say hello to some people and hello to some people, and then we will get going. Steven's in the house. Welcome to the show, Steven. And uh, Big Gunner is in the house. Big Gunner, welcome to the show. Thanks for the um, the pub. He pushes out the message for the show, so we'll see who we get today. So welcome to the show. But yes, so Arsenal, 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 Arsenal. Yeah. Arsenal. So Arsenal plays Villa. Villa are actually, you know, sitting fourth in the league right now. So it's not a uh, not going to be an easy one. Uh, they've uh, beaten some big teams already this season. Beaten us already going into that game. So it's a revenge. And going into the game, my first thought was, you know what? Arsenal usually does good on a revenge tour. You know, if they have a, a game that they need to respond to, they usually come in and they do that now. The previous game, I, I think, and I have said this before, hopefully Arsenal doesn't bring, you know, whatever happened in the previous game into the next one. I'm going to say I think they did. The way they played, um, I think they did. Uh, they needed to give 90. They didn't give 90, uh, 90 minutes. They didn't give 110% like they're supposed to. And um, I think uh, you know. Hopefully, hopefully our bad streak are, is is uh, stopping now. We, we we've um, got a draw and then we got a loss and then hopefully that's it. We need to respond. So that's my take on that one. I think Arsenal needs to respond. I did see a quote from a Liverpool fan, which kind of struck me a little bit. He said um, basically that um, Liverpool is trying to play at a level that you know he doesn't didn't think they're at right now you know like liverpool sitting top of the league was a level that they aren't prepared for and uh the fact that they did lose early in the day on sunday is because they're not at that level and i talk about levels all the time uh, arsenal showed that they don't have the level to respond to what happened they had a chance to do a big thing they've had a chance multiple times to um you know they they had the Bayern Munich game at home. No no opposing fans there. That should be a time when you can actually put, you know go out there and perform and maybe get a win, maybe get a little bit of a, a gap there in goal difference. Couldn't do it. Um, Villa going into that game having noticed that look, uh, City went out and had a big game. Liverpool. Not so good early in the morning, or in the morning for us, anyways. Now, with a win, they sit top of the league with the game, with the league in their control again. They've had it already, weren't able to do it, had it this time. So let's see. We weren't able to respond. And I think that's, for me, that's that experience that we don't have. Like somebody on that pitch for Arsenal needed to do just make that one play make that one play that turns it around. We weren't able to do that. I'm not sure we have that person there right now. So that's kind of where I leave it. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. 
So we're still learning. And I still, you know, I going into this season, I've said it time and time again, Arsenal, the, the, the goals I had for them, none of them really included a trophy just because I thought we're not there yet with our squad. So the fact that we had a, we're having chances right now still with trophies is a good thing, but I hadn't expected that going in. So if it doesn't happen, I will hate it because it, we had a chance, but I will, you know, it'll, as long as we've uh, met some of the goals and we've still had improvement, that's the one thing I can agree with. Uh, so, Tony, tell me your thoughts on the game. First of all, comment real quick on the Liverpool thing. To to me, I, I think they're at the level they are, but with injuries, multiple competitions, they've played eight more games with us. I think the players are gas, push a little to the limit. But it's a good turnaround for a team that been a seventh last year. I think that's part of why Klopp needs a break because it took a lot of energy and stuff to get things right during the off season to, for them to stand at the top of a Premier League. And with us, we were sitting there top of a table on Christmas. Historically, that happens. You win unless you're Liverpool three times City came back and beat them and Last year, City did it to us. And looks like more more likely than anything, I'll do it again this year. So, as far as the game, didn't like the lineup. Did I play Kai? Play Kai up front. He doesn't work in that left eight. For some reason, Arteta can't find the answer. Yeah, we can get that. into we can get into the specifics because I think we're all going to want to talk about. The, the lineups and all of that, but just a general. Let's go. Let's, let's keep it general for now. We're definitely going to yeah. get into the lineups and all of that because uh, let's keep it. A little yeah. bit but more general, general of it is that Emery's known as being this master tactician, making changes and stuff, set up to play good defense, changed to the halftime, double the motorboard, and that's pretty much the end of the game because we didn't make our chances and they made ours theirs so cool all right spencer talk to me uh give me a little i guess how you're feeling about the game uh about the 80th minute you know i'm thinking the lineup the lineup was the lineup i didn't expect Sinchenko to start let's not, let's not go into specifics yet let's just keep it general keep it general first we'll go into the we'll go into all of that because we have enough time yeah. uh disappointed i think is the is a way that the real vibe from it but i've kind of moved on and ready for wednesday um and it's not over i know people think it is i know people have celebrated the fact that this has failed um but I don't think it's over. It's not even – It's just, we got six games left. There's a lot more twists and turns in the story. Um, but general feeling, very disappointed yesterday, but moved on. I moved on mentally for, for Wednesday. I mean, go, we got still got a Champions League to play for, still the title to play for. Um, I'm not gloom and doom like some, but, yeah, we can get into it. Cool, cool, cool. cool. We'll say hello. We'll check out some of these comments, and I do have a comment on something Tony said. It's – yeah, as I like to actually come back at him once in a while. Steven says, I give Emery and his band of Raiders all the credit. They deserve the result. They out for us and out hustled us, and Emery out managed our tether again. Yeah. Basically, he did. He did. Um, you got to finish your dinner, and we did not, and that made it easy for them. Uh, and we'll get into all of that as well. I wasn't happy with the way we lined up. I wanted to have it at nine. Jesus at left wing and Truss out in the middle where he's best uh, at left eight with Sack at right wing. We'll get into all of that. We'll talk about that. Now, if we're using, because some of us like to use the the past, right? So if we're going to go by the past, at this time last season, Arsenal sitting top of the league by five points with a lower goal difference than City this year. City is sitting above Arsenal with a 
is it a three point lead? I think it is three points. Two. Two points. Yeah, two point lead. Arsenal with a bigger goal difference. We know what happened after that point, all right? We know what happened after that point. So, <laughs> you know, if we're going to use the past as a barometer of what could happen, Arsenal, and some people say it's still not over yet. They're not mathematically out. They have to do some business, and yes, they're going to need some luck. They're going to need some luck, right? Uh, just like they got it over the weekend, and uh, some have said, "If uh, is it a city where to go undefeated for the rest of the season?" Yeah, they would have gone. You know, I think it's like almost forty games of not unbeaten if they're able to do that. If they are, if especially if they're able to make it through the um, Champions League as well and the FA Cup. But uh, we shall get into that. So Big Gun is asking. Is there additional 30 minutes of showtime tonight? I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Probably. We'll see how it goes. We'll see. Lonzo's in the house. Welcome to the show, Lonzo. All right, so let's get into it. First things first. The lineup. <laughs> the lineup. As uh, as uh, Stephen says here, he wasn't too happy with the lineup. wanted something else. You know, if you watch me on the watch along, I'm in... Mean, the, the highlights of that were just basically two positions, really, and true. Well, maybe three positions. The absence of Georgina or Parte, I was hoping to get one of them to start. With that, hap with that not being the case, I think Arteta went with Havertz in that eight, Jesus up top, and then on the back line, I was hoping Tomiyasu or Kiriyor, because uh, the defense I was looking at. Ollie Watkins and going, you know what? Be nice for us, you know. He's a top one of the top scorers in the league. Uh, <laughs> Arsenal is one of the best defenses in the league. You know, why don't we just go strong there? But the the other part of this is Douglas Luiz was out, so Arsenal should should have been able to control the midfield. I don't. I think we weakened it by not going strong in the midfield. And I, it may not have it. it it may not have made a difference if we had been able to finish our dinner, but I think it lowered our odds. It lowered, it uh, increased the risk that it would backfire. I don't, you know, Douglas Louise being out, I bet if he was playing, we wouldn't have done, we would have played one of Jorginho or or um, Partey. It's my, it's my thinking there. I would be surprised that he wouldn't do that. Um, Anders has joined us. Welcome to the show, Anders. So, Tony, talk to me about that lineup. <clears throat> Looking at it, you probably want if Kai's that way, you want him up front. But I'm with Steven there. I'd rather see him sitting there. I'd rather see Trissard in the middle. Jesus on the left. I think something that we need to try sometime is playing Kai as of a 10 because they started double teaming. Out of Gord, and after that, all our attack died. But Zinchenko, I mean, it's like I keep saying, Arteta has these couple of crayons that he really likes. If, if you want to paint something yellow, you have to use purple because Arteta is not going to let you do that. He has Jesus, it's guys that he was used to being around at City. He, we've seen his favorites, but having your favorites doesn't mean that's the best decision because Sinchenko, if they're to play him at attack, have somebody drop back and cover like you did two years ago. Uh, last year it worked because you had Zaka there and we just over crammed the left side. And this year we can't figure out who the best eight is. I would, I'm with you. I would have went with Jorginho. I know earlier you said you don't think Jorginho can start the rest of the games, but I think he can. He got six six left at this point in the league. No, it's not the it's not the number of Premier League games. It's the midweek games. We have to make a, a decision. He can't play both. He can't play three games in a eight game period. 
eight day period. I mean, yeah, but to me, it's a are, you see what's working, then I don't know why you change it. You get guys back, you see what's working. Keep your been doing a good job, had one off game. Everybody does that, but I thought he's been solid. You have Tamiyasu. Tamiyasu probably not fit to go more than 60 minutes. Same with Partey. And with Partey, my problem with him, I mean, he really hasn't had the match time to be like match fit, match speed, having all the chemistry of the team because he's been out for a long time. So, but Jorginho has been working. If it's working, don't change it. Kai up front's been working. Don't change it. Yep, yep. No, I hear you. I hear you. And it, it's it's probably not even sometimes the players. It's the the style of football. And I think when he changed the lineup, you also change how we play. So, Spencer, talk to me about that lineup. I didn't like it. Uh, well, um. The lineup looked like he wanted to go heavy and put the game away early. That's why I think he had Jesus out there, Trossard, and Saka all at once. Um, I mean, Haberts did play eight, but he did play a little ten in the game. But, honestly, his best position is up front. And especially in the style of play we were playing there, we were crossing it in, right? You want a six-foot-four guy that can sit there and head the ball in. You don't want to rely on 5'10", Gabriel Jesus. Jesus, I thought, had a pretty decent game as far as his trackbacks and his uh, defensive game. But I saw a stat today that he's converted 7.7 of his shots on target for 50 attempts is the bare minimum. It's the lowest in the Premier League. Um, I mean, it's a rotation decision. Uh, the Zinchenko one, you know, I, Zinchenko to me is the reason why we still are in the tie at Bayern Munich. I think that the bringing him on Wednesday helped out. It helped open the game up. But it also hurt us this weekend. The minute Odegaard came off, everything just kind of fell apart, right? Because Odegaard, if you watch him in the games, he goes so deep. Um, and he, he'll, he'll track back. He presses high. He's got one of the highest work rates on the team easily. But like you said, Gary, we didn't finish our chances. We had chances in the game. We should have put this away early, but we didn't. And the further along we got, the more nervous we got. And then the Ben White picks up the early yellow. Well, you know, if you, if you ask me, you take Ben White off, you want to preserve him, put Tommy Asso on and bring Kivior on, right? So that brings you two fresh fullbacks on there, more defensively solid. Tommy Asso could still play very good on the ball. Um, the first goal, you know, we're not going to get – I know you want to go goal by goal, but the lineup itself – I thought was okay initially starting. It's the subs that just didn't make sense to me. That's where it kind of the in-game decision making, picking Partey, no, picking Jorginho, like not even make a Partey play. Right? Partey would have been perfect for that game too, right? I mean, I figured he would get 60 minutes in this game, and um it seemed otherwise. And you got Declan Rice, it just didn't work out. And and Villa's a good team. You know, they've gotten pumped a few times this season. They're sitting at fourth at 63 points. But they're potentially a Champions League team. Well managed, well put together team. Ollie Watkins is an excellent striker. Um, and Diego Carlos, I mean, I thought he had an excellent game for, for Villa, but lineup wise, I thought initially starting was okay. I like I like Trossard more as a, a guy you bring on. Even Martinelli, I, I just I thought he would bring us that pace, but when he came on, it didn't happen. But um yeah, so just very disappointing that it, it just didn't work, and it just seemed flat, right? After the set, after, but we'll get we'll get further into that. I'm not going to ramble on and take talking points away from later, but disappointing. I hear you. I hear you. Um, there was a couple of things you guys said uh, that I wanted to comment on, and um, I've forgotten it now. So I think we will just uh, I'll read some of the messages there um yep yep no we're gonna yeah we, we talked about it habits and, and zinchenko i think where he plays is uh i mean i looked at a stat 
Havertz at the center forward is um, really good for us. At attacking mid or midfield or wherever you want to call it, we, we don't get the same out of him. Everybody says, oh, he still plays in the same position. But as a team, basically, he has to force his way in there, which I think creates issues in the midfield. Because I don't think he helps in the midfield. Solidi he doesn't solidify the midfield for us the way I think we want to when Jorginho, for example, is playing next to Rice or Partey, hopefully, at some point. So, yeah. Yeah, so we'll get into that. As you say, Gary, it's not over yet. Everyone said that Liverpool would cruise through the rest of the season. That didn't happen. The league is too good now. So there can be surprises. That is true. But also the um, the, the thing that we keep saying is uh, it's cities to basically lose because they um, – you know, they came in their favorites, and no matter where they stood, everybody said they were the favorites, and now they sit top of the table. So that's the scary part. They got something to hold on to now. And then they to go out there and get the five goals that they did. Arsenal to drop two goals. Goal difference went from 11 to 5. Boom, just like that. All right, we were talking about goal difference being a, a good thing for us, and now it's only five. So we need to play well. Colonel Ward joins us. Welcome to the show, Colonel Ward. Problem would be easily solved by rotating Curior and Tommy and playing El Nenny next to Rice. He's always fit and ready to play, but never gets to play. So it's pointless giving this guy a contract. Well, El Nenny sits where? <laughs> he sits third behind Partey and Jorginho. And they were both, I believe, on the bench. So we're, what are we supposed to do? He doesn't play. <laughs> if Arteta's not going to play Jorginho or Partey, then that's the problem. It's not really... El Nenny, I think El Nenny's time has gone, come and gone. We've got players in front of him now. Um, so, yes. Do you also think Partey's in the same boat? Because Arteta doesn't seem to want to go to him much either. You can tell he's giving completely up on El Nenny, but I think Partey will likely move this summer as well. I. If he if he's sitting on the bench, then he she he should play. He should get minutes, or else you're waste. What are you doing? As you, if that's the case, then yeah, El Nani probably should get to play because he's he we know he's always healthy when he's when you know he's been healthy anyways. We'll see about that. But no, I think if you got Jorginho and Partey on the bench, I think they one of them should have started. They're not going to start. They're not both going to start in Bayern Munich, and Partey needs minutes to get get ready anyways. So, you know, uh, our, Ray joins us. Evening, fellas. I've been, I've been believing that Mikel has learned some lessons this season. Habits needs to be a nine, but Zinchenko cannot be trusted at left back for more than 60 minutes. I don't – Zinchenko does not play left back for us, for, in my eyes, unless we're down one and we need to try to score a goal. Supposedly he helps us with that. I don't think it happens much. It's going to agree with you, Spencer. Everybody, everybody's agreeing with you. What's going on here? What are you guys all agreeing with him for? Is, is there a lunar eclipse? The story yeah, is happening again? I so Spencer, know. you're right. As soon as Erdogan came off, our press disappeared, and you're right about the subs. For me, the play that needed to come off most was Saka. He was done after going yeah, but But yeah. Odegaard was totally ineffective because they started double-teaming him. So well, That's why you needed to way. change up the midfield. That's why you needed to do a couple of things to open it up for him. Taking him off, if, if if the reason, I don't think he got taken off because they were nullifying him. I think he got taken off. I thought he got taken off because maybe there was an injury concern or something like that. Yeah, Arteta said he had something that was feeling yeah. weird, so, so he took him off. So, like, you don't take off Erdogan for any reason but injuries at this point in the season. Not after, if you're going to push Saka like you do, Erdogan is is in that same boat. He doesn't come off unless he is his his leg is dangling up by by a thread. That's it. That's where we are right now. The way that Arteta set up this team, I don't agree with it, but that's where we are. It's gonna says, "Hey, we've got Max in the, in the chat." He says, "I I swear, we've all seen this story before." Much love, Brevin. Yeah, yes, sir. I actually got a you actually got a message from Matt today, people. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Yes, yeah, I I could see it on his face when he was typing that message. He's like, "I told you." Yeah, I know, I know. Hey, it's not over yet. It's not over until it's over, right? It's not over until the fat lady sings. It's not over until it's mathematically over. We still have a set a couple of cards in our 
in our hand that we can still play. But we'll see what we do. Arteta, it's all on Arteta now. He's got, I think he's got all of the pieces he needs. You know, he just has to use them the right way. Exactly. What is the health status of our substitutes? I don't think we have, we have a, a bench that's, I think, should be set now. You know, for me, coming up, based on that, the way we started in that game, Barte, Giorgino, Martinelli. I think that's, a, and, and here we are for me. Those are the four players, I for me, that are the only options we have on that bench. What do you guys think about that? You guys think, um, um, if there's another, is there more than four players on, on our, on our bench that we, that are part of a, you know, we'll be, we'll get minutes every game from here on out. No. I, I think it depends on the, it depends on the situation, Gary. It depends on who we're playing, how many minutes we're up. I mean, play, take Wolves for this weekend, for example, say you're four nil up by halftime. Yeah. No, 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 no. That's totally different. I know it is. That's that's the answer to the question because it all depends, right? It's all varying situations. Yeah, yeah. So there's guys that are able. I just if you're talking about, I think we're going to see about three players regularly off the bench, and again that comes on, you know, because when you play Bryce Aparte, you can run a double pivot, um, or and I think that's a lot of times what happens with with the you know Jorginho sits at the base and then. Rice will come up with, with Odegaard, and Odegaard can play deep, and like the three do this weird midfield thing where they can try to draw space out. It all depends on the, on the tactics of the day. I mean, we praised Arteta for his tactics last sun, uh, two Sundays ago against oh, Man City, and then yesterday he just cocked it up horribly. Yeah. It happens. And, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> props to Emery. Yeah. Well, I have a comment on that. Um, I got, I got a comment on that, what you just said there, but I will bring that up in a second here. Um, for me, right now, we have five players on our bench that I think are the, is it Tommy Asu? That played, that weren't, they didn't play. They didn't start. Let's just say that. Tommy Asu, Martinelli, Giorgino, Kirior, and Parte. Those are the five. That's it. Got 16 players that I believe they're the only ones that are going to help us see this season out. Vieira, nah. Ramsdale, only if Raya is is injured, all right? Eddie and Kedia, nope. Emil Sufro, nope, not at this point. We're not going to see enough of him to get a gauge. I don't know what you guys think, but I think we've got five players on our bench that are going to help us see the season out. I don't think we have more than that. It doesn't answer, you know, and that gives us one attacking player on on the bench, depending on who we go with, you know. And then again, it may, you know, if we go with Giorgino Aparte to start, we'll have two attacking players, right? Jesus uh-huh. and 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 Trossard most likely. And here we go, Trossard for me. And Arteta hasn't figured it out. Trossard, he hasn't figured out how to place Trossard in the starting position for me. It's too late now. Let him come off the bench and be in a, a, a sub that turns that turns on the you know microwave like we've seen in the NBA for those who know the microwave comes on and let him play. I don't think we can figure out a way to get him to start to where consistently we get something out of him. Tony, what do you think? Charles Stewart for me comes off the bench from here on now. I, I I've been asking for it. I'm not gonna. I don't think we're gonna see it. Well, we've seen what Jesus out. That just hard works. We score more goals. Uh, I I think Jesus is a problem. I think if you put Trussard in the middle, or if you put Kai up there, put Jesus up, Vince, then put Trussard out on the left. You have different results, but I, I think it's what Arteta is asking them to do. You see, Jesus is supposed to be a striker of attacker, but he's dropping back deep instead of being up there up front. And like Kai, he's perfect for a Premier League because he's a big guy. You see what happens with Holland. It seems like 
Gabriel and Saliba is about the only two players that shut him down. So we used to have that with Giroud. Giroud scored 28 headers for us. A lot of the crosses we may call our corner kicks. Guys would be up there leading the line or somewhere about. He definitely shouldn't be used in the midfield. But to me, it's all down to tactics. Like I said, cool. you've seen Villa set up defensively. We only had a few chances. That might have been pretty good chances, but we missed them. That make for most of the day. That's kind of been our problem, is being clinical. So to me, having Trissard out there is critical of that part because he's the most clinical guy we got. So we get to the summer, get to buy somebody else. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, Parte, Tommy Asu, Vieira. Vieira, for me, not an answer. I don't know what you guys think about that, but I... Spencer, um, we're talking about Trussard. For me, I just don't think he... Like the way we play right now and the way we've set up when he plays, he's not going to play in a nine if Havertz is, is going to play... Havish should never play in the midfield, and if he's healthy and ready to go, he plays plays in the middle, up top there. Trossard, that means for me, Trossard isn't starting. Martinelli hopefully is coming back, getting him back healthy. Saka is always going to play. So Trossard for me, just it's not working. I don't know about you, but Trossard for me doesn't start. Yeah, it's funny. I was listening to Arch Blog earlier today, and they talk about the circle of trust with Trossard, right? Like he does enough to, he does enough when he substitutes to get a start and then he starts and it's just kind of underwhelming. And then he gets a sub, like it's like this weird circle. And I agree. And it, it's funny. Cause that was the thing about the bench or the lineup, all the attacking options were on the pitch, right? If you look at it, the only real defensive minded person you had besides the back line was Declan Rice. You know, Gabriel Saliba and even Ben White. Sanchenko's not very defensively minded as far as the fullback discipline technician. That's another discussion. But so you went very heavy. It was almost just like we're going to put this game away in the first 30 minutes and then we can rotate players in at that point. So then you'll, you're left with Martinelli on the bench, ESR, who 2021 would have been like, oh, awesome ESR, but 2022 ESR. And even now, it's, it's still, he still had scored that goal. He still doesn't look himself again. Um, but you know, this, we just went a little too heavy on the lineup. Didn't think about the rotation. Didn't think about the balance. Um, the minute Odegaard went off, eh, that's when things got sloppy and we conceded. And then there's just calamity of errors, lack of, lack of focus. But yeah, Trosser's a guy that I love and I think, and it's okay. Like, you know, you need role players, right? We talk about, let's go back to the bulls, right? NBA. You had role players that come off the bench on, on the Jordan teams. Right, like guys that just knew their role, and it takes a special person to want to to be that super sub or whatever. But City has him. I mean, look at Grealish. Grealish doesn't start every game, but he comes on. Um, you know, and, and you look at Liverpool. They've got a front line of people that rotate constantly. Jada's their what would you consider their super sub? But um, yeah, Trosser's a guy that. And, and it's not that it's not knock on Trossard's ability because I think he's very important to this last six games. We're going to need four, five, six goals from, from Trossard to get through these last, you know, league games. But when we get those goals and where they come from is going to be the, the critical. I mean, we've got tough games. Chelsea left, Tottenham left. Uh, it's not going to be easy. But for me, he's a guy that needs to come off the bench. It's where I think he's exceeded for this club. Habert's back up top at the nine. Bring Martinelli back in. Or if you want to put Jesus on the wing, do that. Utilize his pace, him and, and Saka. And maybe even look at, you know, Martinelli coming in and playing for Saka. Just change it up a little bit. But make sure you leave yourself um, credible attacking options on the bench to come on when you need, when you need something. I hear you. I hear you. I'm going to go a little bit off, off of where I was going to go next. But you mentioned something about how we played at City and – you know, I've heard, you know, many people say, you know, when we played at City, we didn't play to win. 
we were defensively sound, but um, we weren't um, good to go um, there. I actually have to step away for a second, but uh, I did want to, you know, I want to let you guys, uh, let Spencer, I'll let you start it off, though, talking about the chances that we did miss in that first half, because that's really the only ones that, for me, oh, wait, you know what? I don't have to go. Sorry. I was going to have to go, and I saw a text that said I'm good. <laughs> so, <laughs> so things switch, swing chains around here. I was going to go off on a tangent a little bit, because you had brought up City and the reason why I wanted to go up on a tangent on that was people who said, you know what? You played that thing to get a nil-nil draw. You didn't play that thing to get the win. If you had got that win, you'd be sitting still top of the league right now, even with the mistakes that we had over the weekend. And um, didn't take that risk, you know, as much as people thought we would. Kind of sat back a little bit and let them uh, absorb a lot of the pressure from them. Um, second half, it looked like that against against uh, Villa. We, didn't like, we did not get that ball across the midline much in that second half. Um, and I don't, I don't know if that was part of that was planned. If not, then we needed to make changes. We didn't do it then. I mean, I think, you know, some could say that there may be three points that we could have had in the last, in the, in the previous two games if we had played a little bit more um, attack-minded. Uh, what, what say you on that one? I, you know, because you know, if you want to get ahead of City and you play them head to head and you get a, a second win, <laughs> I mean, we played good enough to put ourselves to win. I know we had chances, but you know, could have had more in that City match. You know, if we had played it, you know, a little bit more attack minded. Spencer, that's on you. If you yeah. Want. So I hear those discussions or the comments. Um, I think the goal at City was to not concede. I mean, you've gone up there, hadn't won there since I believe 2015 was the last time. You've gotten pumped a few times. 2021, I'll never forget it because I was doing my overseas fun time. And uh, we got beat 5-0. And then last year, 4-1. So I think Arteta came into the game looking at like, hey, we're not going to concede at this point. We're probably going to get three or four chances in the game to hit them on the counter, kind of like they did in the FA Cup in 2020. Kind of sit back, absorb pressure. Um, I, you know, I think he played it right, and I think if we make it through Munich and we see them again, which potentially could happen, we may see the same thing again in a couple weeks. Uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely, could be sitting there six points clear. Um, you know, with a win over City, it didn't happen. Um, and even even yesterday, let's be honest here. If we'd have done a nil nil, we'd have been disappointed. But it feels different when you lose, right? The loss feels different. Zero zero. You're still dropping points. You can't drop points at this time of the at this in the season two city. You know, it, it's it's a tough one, Gary. Because I I think if we if we play a little more open, maybe we lose that game two nil, right? And then the whole thing is just a mute point at that point. So. We've taken eight points out of 12 from City and Liverpool this season. And that's pretty good. But where we screwed up is we've, we've taken no points from Villa and one point for Fulham. Yeah. Kind of yeah. like last year. What did we? I think we dropped four points to Southampton. Or, or five, maybe it was about one point, and they were the last team in the league. You don't win titles when you do things like that. And this is part of that learning process. Um, and – whether that's learning for the club more than just the manager learning. I think that's the discussion at this point, because I know people say our dad is learning on the job, but this becomes a, you have to learn how to win. You look at Liverpool. Yeah. And we, this is, and this be serious here about this, not negating what Arsenal failed to do yesterday. No question. Very disappointing, but city has a chance to win another treble. I mean, two trebles in a row. I mean, how do you beat that? Liverpool with the great Klopp teams won once. It's not easy. The fact that we're even here is, is pretty impressive at that point. Yeah. Is it no, up Liverpool City? hasn't won a, 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 a true treble. So. Right, right. No, I'm saying like they've beaten City once yeah. to win the league. Oh, That's yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So context is needed for this, right? It's like you say all the time, Gary, there's levels to everything. Yeah, no, no. There's levels to it, but I think this season we are – Playing really good football, and I don't. Yeah. And I once again, I don't think we have um, games to 
essentially take off and go, you know what, we need to go for a draw. I don't think we can do that because you, know, you right now a win is what we need. Like say we lost to City and we won against Villa, we still be the top of the league. That one point didn't get us anything. And if you're going to say you're going to risk things, you're going to play a little bit open and stuff like that and put yourself in more scoring opportunities. All right. Mm-hmm. So you do that. All right. Because, you know, it's because so, basically that's what that's what Villa did to us. Right. They That first half, they could have been down two, three nil. Game totally different. Yeah, like, you know, everybody would have said that. Right. But guess what? They didn't score. Guess what they did in the second half? Well, you know, what? if you don't want to take it. Guess what? Maybe we'll take it, all right? And they had that kind of mentality, and they went out, and they, you know, any chance they got, they took it. Now, playing City on the road, nil nil. You really got nothing to lose because we've already, everybody's already said, you know what? You don't necessarily always have to beat City to win the league. But like you said, we need to win those other games, all right? So when you're nil nil, you've got a really good defense, regardless of what you say. You know what's going on, and you have a chance, and you have attackers that can, you know, make 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 a case, and uh, you maybe you take that chance because, you know, you come home, you, you come, think about it, you beat City, maybe you struggle against Bayern Munich, and you come home to Villa, game feels a lot different, <laughs> especially when you see City drop points on that point, right? And because at that point you're still top of the league, even with the City win. <laughs> because Whether we want to agree with this or not, the <laughs> result on Wednesday definitely had an impact on on yesterday because it created the doubts. The yeah. sloppiness defensively showed up, right? Yeah. yeah. So no, but it, 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 you build on it, right? We always talk about trying to build, bring something yeah. into the next game, and what we did in in the city match, we didn't. It didn't really help us for the you know Bayern Munich game because the defense got worse. The defense, the defense that stood up against City on the road was not, you know, we gave up two goals in that game, right? Yeah. You know, and it was, and it was mostly, it was part mostly on the defense, how those goals were given up, you know? So mm-hmm. that was, you know, that might have, you know, we, we put all, everything went into that City match, didn't get the win, Bayern Munich, defense struggles. Yesterday, defense held up. Should have should, the defense should have been screaming at the offense to score it didn't happen. Tony, talk to me about uh, the city. You think uh, not getting the win at City, not going for it at City, yeah, something we might regret as well. We've we've seen this multiple times with us playing City and Liverpool that we set up more defensively, try to absorb the pressure, give them seventy percent of the possession yeah. try to play a little bit of tagging but we really kind of lack the speed minus martinelli to be able to get out there get a front on the counters but yeah i think we should have went for the game we didn't and it's kind of like do you look at was he looking at byron when we played city was he looking at fire yesterday? Or is he just going back to his old tactics that he's used to drop it back to? Yeah, but, uh, I hear you. But, yeah, but, you know what? Arteta cannot look forward to the next game. He's not that type of manager yet in his career. And, and I, I think some camp managers don't even look that far ahead. You know why? Because we've heard some of their players say it. I think it was uh, Stones said it to Rice when they were at the uh, when they were at the the England training, and Rice was talking about they were playing City coming up, and he's like, "I'm just thinking about the next game." <laughs> That's what he said. You know what I mean? And I've been yeah. saying it all season, and I've been seeing, it, especially since the New Year, just taking one game at a time. We cannot look. We can't afford to look to the next match we don't that's not good then <laughs> we can't afford to do that we gotta win what's right in front of us because all every game we play every game we've played since that liverpool lost in the fa cup has an opportunity to get us a trophy 
right? Since we got knocked out of the FA Cup, every game we've played since, they all are put it, getting us in a direction to get a trophy. So we can't afford to drop any of them. I just wish Arteta would learn to be proactive instead of reactive. And he, he wasn't really even reactive yesterday. It's like you're 85 minutes in, you're making substitutions. It's too late to make the game, especially a few minutes later. They're at 2 0. But to me, you, you seen it with Liverpool. You heard Klopp saying, oh, we didn't expect him to set up this way. Then Klopp totally changed their set up at halftime. And Liverpool came out on the good side of it. And this, I thought Villa played a good first half. Even though we still had some chances, I thought they were set up good defensively. But then they made the switch because you kept hearing Odegaard's name throughout the first half. He was doing good passes. He was dropping back like he's going to do it. I think Spencer mentioned his dropping back ability, but he forgot he must be in one of the best defenders, which he is. But you put two bodies on him, and he just can't compete because he's not big enough. So, so we need a second option there at his 10. But for me, it's just getting the tactics wrong, getting the lineups wrong. And to me, you, you, we see what this team can do. You've seen what Airport Albert did when Arteta was out of there, one of our best attacking games. But I think Arteta needs to go back to the strengths. I think he's just making too many changes for the sake of changing when you've seen what was working. You, you, your first defeat of the year yesterday, but other than that, you've been clicking. You're doing great in March without Jesus in there. Then you throw Jesus and Zinchenko back there. Upsets the chemistry. And, and to me, it's like if there's no plays in Zinchenko, you have to do what you did two years ago. It's happened when Zaka would drop back and cover his left back wide, Terni or whoever else was playing as a little left back and we didn't do that last year but it worked because you had Zaka and Zinchenko just totally overloading that left side and it worked and Arteta has changed it this year as it really found out who he wants as that left eight he keeps going to Kai but that's the wrong hole but, but to me to answer your question yeah it's a game he should go for. To me, I think we should always be playing your style. Don't play down to who you're playing. Don't set up defensively because, I mean, you got the best center backs in the world. You see what Gabriel has did to Holland on several occasions now. Totally set him out. So, to me, just go for it. I mean... I would rather lose than just sit there and play slow, just possessing football that doesn't mean you ever win. I hear you. I hear you. And uh, so I answered some of these messages here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, these you know, Some of these points dropped were early in the season. They do come back to haunt you. But, you know, if we had gotten all the points we talked about, they were, we would have been on a you know, 10, 20 game win streak, <laughs> which, you know, is really tough to do. So I, I kind of feel like, yeah, you drop points throughout the season. We didn't drop points to City and Liverpool, um, you know, and uh, we did elsewhere. So maybe that's where we stand. But you know what? When at Towards the end of the season, that's when, you know, that's when you maybe have to go a little bit over. Um, Gary, you forgot. That's from Steven. Gary, you forgot that Villa came closest to scoring in the first half by hitting the woodwork. They could have beat us 4-0 with a bar post shot in the second half. Yeah, it could have been, but it could have been 2-3-1 in the first half, right? Because we had, we were on the, we were the dominant team. We had the most possession, had the most shots and all of that, you know? So I, I kind of felt like, you know what? Though that's, that's also what could have happened. That the, 
the ball hitting the <laughs> hitting the crossbar, hitting the crossbar and the posts. You know, they had two shots. They hit the post and the crossbar. Three touches on the woodwork, um, and the misses that we had kind of was a wash, if you think of it right. So uh, we had they had chances. We had chances, and um, then they they made the extra ones. We didn't have make any extra ones that would have um, gotten us what we needed. But uh, yeah, so talking about the chances, I don't know. I, I'm going by, I think I just, just a quick synopsis, I think. I know that uh, Jesus had about two chances in that, two chances to score, didn't get it done. Zach I know had one, but I think he had actually two chances to score. Uh, one was in a side netting. I think we hit the side netting twice. I think uh, one was Jesus, one was Saka. Um, Trossard had that shot right in front of goal. He picks a corner. He scores. Erdogan and and Kai. I'm not sure if they took any shots. It's you know, I, at one point in the game, I was like Erdogan, please just you you have to do. You're the captain. At some point, you're just gonna have to say, "Put it on, put put the game on your shoulders, and help us see this thing through." You're gonna have to go and score. You, you know, you're gonna have to take a shot. You know, he um, got a a free kick, I think, um, late in, in in the second half, and that went off the head of one of the defenders. I mean, you know, it's been a while since we've hit a, a free uh, a free kick. It's been a very long time, and I think he was the last one to do it. I think against Norwich, if I recall. I think yeah, I and that was Sorry. that was a weird one because you had Arsenal shielding their wall. And yeah, just ended but he went way. away from it and then hit it off the defender anyway. You know, yeah. so. But um, Spencer, I don't know the chances that we had. I kind of listed what I thought were some of them. Like I said, I don't think Erdogan and 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 Kai. Got I don't even know if Kai got any to, to mention. He, he did. Um, I mean, I, I can go through it here. You know, 10th minute, Kai got a, a shot off. Uh, 15th minute, Kai got another shot off. Gabriel Jesus, 17th minute. 19th minute, Bakai Osaka. Uh, 22nd, Zanchenko. 23rd, Jesus. Uh, 33rd minute, High Averts. 33rd minute, uh, Trossard. 37th minute, Odegaard, 38th minute, Saka, 39th minute, Odegaard was a shot that was blocked. Um, 39th minute, Trosser, 39th minute, Saka, 40th minute, Saka. And then it kind of dries up, if I'm going to be honest with you. Um, the next attempt by Arsenal, and I'm going through the timeline here, Gary, if you bear with me, you almost have to go to the 63rd minute. So you almost went like 30-some minutes without a shot. And it was a Jesus shot. It just didn't finish the dinner, man. I mean, the amount of runs that I saw Jesus do, uh, Haberts do on uh, on Sat on Sunday. Uh, computer's frozen up here a little bit, Gary. If you bear with me. Uh, you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, cool. I'm just kind of frozen up. Um, yeah, it's just just didn't finish the dinner, and. Uh, you know, the longer you go without finishing your dinner, the more likely a team like Villa is going to punish you, right? And that's that's the problem here. We didn't finish our chances. But um, but, but are they that good of chances when we we took eighteen shots, but only four were on target? I mean, yeah. To to, to me, uh, which is hard. Jesus were like really only clear chances. Most of them were just not that good of shots. Yeah. It, it, it wasn't their goalkeeper shutting us down. It's just the thing we've been talking about for two years. We're just not clinical enough. Yeah. I and mean, the key thing for me is we got to get those shots on target, and we don't do that well enough. Say hello to Holly, Mrs. Spencer. I know that's not her name, but, uh, you know, welcome to the show. Yeah, I think this is the second half. Only one clear chance I think you're talking about. And that's not good. That's not good for us. Oh, Spencer in trouble. He's left us for a second. Maybe he'll be back. 
Yeah, you probably tried to reset that. I stuck the the wife pulled the um the plug on you. Uh, the window yeah. uh, froze up on me. Sorry about that. All right. Spencer, your mouth is oh, I didn't, I didn't notice that because sometimes you're, <laughs> you just <laughs> no. Nah, like I said, I think we had more than enough chances. I think the reason why we didn't have as many sh shots as we should have is because we, um, once again, for me, I think the the opportunities are lost before they even get taken, and um, we do that a lot for me, anyways, more than we should. A lot of times, we just need to go full throttle when we get an opportunity to shoot to score and attack we don't do that enough um like the scent the the uh say it all the time that the, the uh, sense of urgency isn't there when we attack so I, I haven't seen one of your watch alongs in a while gary but are you still shout and shoot all the time yeah yeah i think i do I think I do because we keep taking these extra touches and then the shot is lost. I mean, we dribble. I mean, a couple of times we dri we were offsides. We've been getting offsides a lot now because I think we're offsides now because we're not making the pass. I think Hav I was even talking about Havish is making runs through the middle and we're not passing it. <laughs> you know, we're not making that pass. And it's like, come on. And, it, you know, and a couple of times they made the pass. They were late. He was offsides. You know, I think. He's making those runs. I, I'm assuming that's because our Ted has said make those runs, right? So somebody should be looking to make that pass, and they're not. Um, and I think, you know, that's probably a lot. To, some of that's to do with Villa, but I think also we need to be looking for it as well, and we weren't. Um, I was looking at, like, uh, Ars blogs, like, you know, he has his um, blog that he, with the game, and the first shot, at least in the game, was Jesus' shot that was blocked in the 25th minute. Um, for Arsenal. Oh wait, no, no, no. Twentieth minute. Is that one off the box. Site? It was a Erdogan pass to Saka into the box. Took a poor touch, right foot, wider than near post. You know, that was the um the first shot that we took. Uh, mine was, to this. Mine was off the club website. Yeah. But there's I mean, like I think I mentioned here because Steve said something like I didn't really distinguish from what was blocked and what was wide of the target or what was on target. Yeah. I was just throwing the to me it was the opportunities, whether they're quality creations or not, they're opportunities, right? Yeah. And whether that's take a couple more seconds, hold on to the ball. I know you say shoot, but my thing is like, is there a pass potentially open? Did someone see that's the thing? Face? You if you are in the box, which is where the, some of these shots are coming from, first instinct has to be shoot. Because guess what? When you make that pass, the defense shifts with you. When you make that, mm -hmm. when your first touch is a shot, the defense cannot settle, cannot get the block in. You took an extra touch and you take and a block, but a lot of times we don't even take, we don't, like you saw the, the goal we scored against uh, Bayern Munich, right? The first touch was a shot for Saka, right? Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen enough. And, we, and I know we're good at passing. You know? That doesn't happen enough. And I'll give you a, another point where I think you're right on this. And because it's all situational base. But mm -hmm. the two times we've beaten City, deflections, right? In the box. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Trossard an extra time to send us to penalties. And uh, the first game of the Emirates, uh, Martinelli uh, off of Ake. Yep. Yeah. So there is some truth to that. Like I go back to Jesus. I think it was, I want to say. There was one game where he had five guys on him and everybody's around outside of the box. I mean, that's one of those instances where you pass. I mean, also you could check, see who's open on the back post. Everything's situational based, but I do agree with you on this. So just take a shot, right? Mm -hmm. Something might, something might deflect. Yep. And I do think sometimes, do we have enough killers in the team? That becomes the next question, right? Do we have enough clinical guys, enough, as much as I like Kai Havertz, I don't think he's too clinical enough as far as, as finishing at times. I think he's too timid. He's gotten better as the year's gone on and see the confidence growing and everything, and I think it's going to get even better with Arteta. But it's not to the level of Ali Watkins. It's not to the level of uh, – uh, uh, um, I'm thinking of the guy's name from Bournemouth. Solanke. Uh, Solanke. It's not to that level. It's going to get there, I think. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we're also looking at a team that scored the most goals in this in 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 the league, and has the least amount of goals conceded. So, 
are we overanalyzing a bad result here based on where it is in the season? I mean, we let's go back to that 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 the, the Christmas stretch, Gary and Tony. Uh, the loss to Villa. And if I'm not mistaken, we also had a stretch there where we lost to West Ham. We set yeah. a Premier League record for the amount of touches in an, an attacking area at 82, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. and lost that game 2-0. Yep. Yeah. So there's a, there's another question. Are we taking quality chances? And that becomes the next the next next question, right? Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I think it's a, I think it's a mix of the two points you're saying there because every time he's used to me, he usually has pretty good chances, but so many times it's wide of a goal. It's like I swear like any of those last ten shots have been wide because it just doesn't matter if it's to the left side or right side, but he's just sitting there missing. And to me, you got to start at Odegaard, which are really your only like clinical guys on there. So that's not enough. You it's need them up in your. Well, uh, you say that, but I, I I don't believe that's a negative because not too many teams have these clinical strikers that you're talking about. Like Jada, most clinical guy at Liverpool outside of, and Salah's not clinical. Jada is the only one. <laughs> like that clinical where like they get in, they get an opportunity. Like he has been money for them for years. This is past game. Not so much. And that, but that's him coming back from an injury, but Jada has been money. Mares money, right. For them. You know, you see, you get a hat trick and then he's sitting out the next game. You're like, what what's going on here? All right. So I kind of feel like there's not as many clinical attackers and strikers as you think. All right. And some don't start. <laughs> It's the hardest thing to do in this sport is to to score yeah. goals. But yeah. I think for me, and I think we've mentioned this earlier, to me, Jesus' strength is on the wings. Mm-hmm. You need to utilize that guy's pace on the outside to create space for other players. Yeah. You know, like if you're thinking about – if you're asking a guy to play striker, my, my mentality with it is I need a six-foot-two guy or higher because mm-hmm. I need someone that can do headers in the box, that can play in crowded spaces that is strong enough to push off that becomes what you're looking for in that. And to me, Jesus has this elite pace on the outside and just his technical skills. There's a player there. Like, I'm not really to bend off Jesus like some people are. I just would like for him to be the winger. If that's the guy that's – and whether that's on the left side or the right side, it doesn't matter to me because there's such a quality of the player. I would put him almost in like rotating with Saka, rotating with Martinelli, um, starting some of these games. But as a striker – and I know that's probably how he convinced him to sign for Arsenal. Arteta was like, hey, you'll play the nine. But you just need something different. And I, it's kind of like the argument with Kai in the midfield, right? There's things in the midfield he does good for you, but there's things in the midfield he doesn't do good for you. So what's the best position for Kai? Probably on the front line. So, But all this can go away Wednesday. Um. You know, the league's now out of our hands, but at the same time, you know, make yourself to a semifinal of the Champions League. I mean, it re-energizes the team, and who knows what happens. But this is – compete, man. Don't quit. I've seen seen people today – I'm like, do you guys even want to play the rest of the games of the season, or do you just want to give up? I get it. It sucks we lost yesterday. It's the most demoralizing thing. It's been a horrible day. I've been upset about it. But I'm not ready to quit as a fan. I'm not ready to quit on Arteta. I mean, and, and not to go on a tangent here, but the fans that walked out, what are you guys oh, doing? Yeah. That that's was actually that's what, I, that's what I was on my lesson since you brought it up. I guess we'll continue. Go ahead. Continue hey, I, with the I, and listen, I, I, like I said, I can't, I don't go to the Emirates. I don't deal with the bus traffic or the, the train schedule like some of those people do. So I'm going to, there's some I will, I'll forgive. But dude, you got it. And I know it's a poor performance. But then, like, I saw uh, someone posting that Odegaard was the only person that clapped everybody. Well, everybody else left the stadium, so how do the players feel? I mean, it's a, it's a bad – it goes both ways. And, and I've heard some people say that the clientele that goes to the game now is not really more fans and more corporate, and that's possibly true. But we're in the middle of a title race, two games off – two points off first, and you're walking out on the team. You can't do that, man. You just can't do that. 
Uh, Gary, yeah. I, dig I digress on that. I, I just wanted to say that real quick. But no, that's, that, this is that's a topic we can definitely talk about. It burnt me up on on Sunday, and don't get me wrong, I'm embarrassed by the performance. Infuriating, but and they've given they've given us happiness this year. You can't deny this. We're about to potentially be in a semifinal of the Champions League, and you walked out on that team. It's embarrassing. I I don't know how I take a lot of them are corporate because there are so many games. It's a little less notable during COVID, but there's plenty of times that you'd probably see the stadium maybe 60% full. There'd be about 40,000 fans there, but they always would say the 60,000 whatever because all the tickets were sold but not everybody showed up but i was asked you have a question you're sitting there you're playing a team wednesday so are they gonna be are they gonna be more fired up since they're have no chance of winning the league lost it with five games to go i mean they've had all time Bad season. All of it started last year getting money. They broke the pay structure. The team's older than it usually is. It's a little mixed, but they've been ran pretty bad the last two seasons. So it's going to be interesting to see if their players are going to come up and fight or they're just going to be like, I don't care. I'm going to go out there go through emotions for 90 minutes and not really care if they win or not. So What team are you that, talking about? Bayern Munich. Uh, Bayern Munich. Yeah, I, I can't see them like rolling over. over. They have, as you said, this is it. This is their ticket to a opportunity to win a trophy. Yeah, but And these are, like you they, said, players that are on there. Some of them might not, will probably not be there next season with a new manager most likely so i can't um i don't see muller going out like that musiala going out like that davies going out like no davies isn't even playing so you can't worry about him neuer will going out like that like i can't see a, a number of their players seasoned veterans and some new newbies wanting to just like at home lose to an arsenal team that they used to batter back in the days i don't think so i think uh it's going to be a tough one for arsenal um, I, <laughs> like I said, I've only empty. I left the game early once. It was like a homecoming game, and we got spanked really poorly. I mean, it was really bad. I was like, it was a bad week and all in general. But that game, I left. But otherwise, I've I usually stay for the. I always stay for the the whole game, um, especially when it's my team playing. I may leave early when it's somebody else's team, but my team's playing. I stay. And yeah. you know, it 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 it's uh. It is a, a big concern because we talk, you know, we heard, we've heard it multiple times. Uh, Emirates is a, a library. The atmosphere in the Emirates is just not what it used to be. It's back. These are fans that have seen us come back and score goals and two goals in the last 10 minutes of a game. They're the ones that are talking about the atmosphere and all of that. They've seen, they've seen um, Giroud come in late in games and get us two goals to where we come back and win a game. So they've seen some crazy things happen. We are a team that can do that. You know, we have, you know, the one, the, the first goal, damn it. All right, we need to settle down. And before you can even settle down, bang, another goal had, had been scored, right? <laughs> As you said, it's a two-way street. We, the fans have to feel like the players are giving it all, and the players need to be sitting in the stadium and not really having not having to say anything. They shouldn't have to tell us to to make noises, right? The game is getting in that second half. The game was getting out of our control. You know, you could see it. The fans at that point, you know, usually can wake you up. It's like, what are we doing here? <laughs> you know, what are we doing? Like you've seen our players ask for the fans to to get them up and ready, especially when like they've had an opportunity to score and they've clang, 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 four shots, all off blocks and all of that. And they're like, yes, let's do it. That second half, that was needed. 
either from the fans or from the players. I think the players kind of had lost a little bit of will to fight, and the fans didn't pick them up. You know, when they needed, we needed both, and that's what you'll see. I believe you'll see that, in you know, in Germany, we go to the Allianz. Say we go up one goal, two goals. They will be trying to get their their team back into that game, no doubt about it. It doesn't matter what German team you're playing. No, no, I'm just saying we're going to the Allianz. So it's only matters right now is Allianz. They will want that team not to suffer, you know, suffer defeat. But, but that's a league-wide thing, celebrating like that. You seen it yesterday when the champions were awarded. You see the whole pitch was full of people. Still don't know how you fit that many people on the pitch. Dangerous, but yeah, but that's a team winning a champion. I'm talking about a team who is behind at home in a very important yeah. game. This is a game. <laughs> This is a game that puts you in front of everybody in the league. And you have six games to see out to win it. Yeah, and, and that's it. So as far as Munich on Wednesday, the fans are going to be up for it. Not even a question. Are there some players that may have quit on Tuchel? Maybe. Doubt it. But the guys, like you said, the Mueller's, the Neuer's, uh, the Muzialas, uh, whatever. Those guys are going to be up for it. Harry Kane, you got to motivate Harry Kane to play Arsenal. Like you really don't. Like he just does it naturally. But we also give him ammo by the way we egg it on. But either way, um, I mean, this is the thing. I also they made a joke about you know Luton on uh, a couple weeks ago. It was really quiet there. It was a two 0 It was a very workmanship win, right? But like the thing that really bothered me, and and I, I, you know, I'm not letting the players off the hook here on this, but the fans, man, you got to be in it. I'm not hearing the chants. I'm not hearing the Ale Ale's. I'm not hearing the uh, uh, the Waka Waka. I'm not hearing these songs that I hear when we're winning and things are good. Well, there's where's where's the excitement? I don't know, man. Like our fan base, and we but we've seen it today on the Twitters and the social media. I know social media is a microcosm of of a bigger picture that's not completely true, but it's a fan base that's very finical at this time. And I mean, the guys need our push and our support. I mean. There are professionals. They do get a hefty paycheck, but momentum is a thing. I think I saw a stat, and maybe someone said this to me. It's not an original thought, but the Premier League during COVID with no fans, the most away wins happened ever. Fans have an impact. Momentum has an impact. Gary, you like you like college. Tony, you like college. Think about the SEC, just for example. You go into the swamp on a Saturday night, LSU coming in, <laughs> fit in the nation. That place is rocking. They want to. They want to ruin LSU season. Um, so fans have an impact, whether we agree with it or not. Um, I mean, look at look at Seattle. Seattle has a twelfth man. Their stadium is set up a way for the decibels to make it loud. <laughs> and, and, and there, it doesn't matter what sport you're playing. If it's American football, yep. they don't care. So Wednesday's going to be tough. The fans are going to be up for it. Players are going to be up for it. <laughs> um. But there is a potential, man. You, you right the wrongs. You went on to you went, like I said, you went on Wednesday, and and everything else does its, it kind of writes itself. Um, but yeah, I don't. I mean, I, you know, I've got tactical whatever on the background here, and they're showing that exposure that Zinchenko leaves us, and it's just, it's just that whole right side of the pitch is just wide open. But yeah. Yeah, can't do that on Wednesday. Here's the thing: yes, he did that, but no, our captain, our our captain, but our number six cannot not know what is going on around him. That has to be aware, and I think he even it looked. Some people, I think they said he did look and see him, but then kind of forgot about it for a bit, just enough. So I players are either. You know, expect you know, do things because the coach puts them in that position, or they're just out of position. If you can fix it, <laughs> you fix it. You know what I mean? You have to make like this is the whole thing with that whole like you don't double down on a mistake. You you look and your fullback's not on your side, right? You gotta take cover and make sure you got it covered over there, right? 
and he doesn't do that. So, like, it's not on Rice, but it's on Rice to make that recovery when you know the defense is compromised, right? You have yeah. to. You have no choice. That's just the way it ended up. Yeah, I think his form's kind of... Your phone is blocking up. your screen, or something's blocking... Ah, that's a stupid water bottle. Oh. Yeah, no, like I said, I think, yes, it wasn't on Rice to make the play, but it was on Rice to make the play at that posi- at that point in the game. Right? At that point in the game, it was just to make that play, because... Uh, I mean, isn't that why we bought him? We bought him to have at six. Yeah. And you have had this talk the last couple of weeks that we need, need to go look, look for another number six. It's like, what's the point of spending the hundred and whatever million for him if you're not uh, using him in the position that you intended him to be in? Because I think they bought him as an eight in mind. Because yeah. uh, here's why Partey and Jorginho can do the six roll. Yeah. Rice can do it when you need to do it. Rice can fall back into center but, back. But, but I blame Raya on that as well. As a former keeper, hold on. You have to know when your back post is covered. So it's also on you know, the keeper to notify when, when there's runners coming as well. So, yes, Sanchenko. Yes, Rice. Yes, Saliba. It's, it's, it's a totality of errors. Yeah, you, know right? what that play, you know what that play is? You know what that play is? That is the – the team – the players have seen this similar issue mm-hmm. before – in the Newcastle match, right? Things just broke down. Mm-hmm. At that point, you got to play things a little bit safer. As you said, a goalkeeper probably doesn't need to come off his line. He needs to make, survey the area and make sure everything is good to go there. I think um, not not exactly the same, but similar situation. We lost a little bit of our. Um, uh, our, our, our four, you know, our, our um, what do they call it? I can't think of the word, but we lost our shape, right? Defensively, yeah. it was broken down. There were holes all over the place. Somebody needed to stand up and say, "Look, let's settle this thing down, right? Clear this ball out, you know." But like you said, protect both posts, all of that kind of stuff. Didn't happen. We paid for it dearly. Uh, but on that. Why is Gabriel like the only one that saw what was happening? Because he generally plays on the left, but mm. he was up on the right side there, and mm. no, nobody helped him out. Yeah, yeah. No, I hear you. I, like I said, I, I think it was a total breakdown. We needed somebody to stand up. Like once again, we, this is going to happen, and we don't have that person. Somebody's going to have to step up, make the play. Most of the time, I'm asking the goalkeeper to make that play, all right? He put himself in such a bad situation, it was never going to happen. But sometimes it's the goalkeeper when the defense in front of him collapses. But that time, I think it was Rice. He needed to make sure that that play out to the right there on the right-hand side of the uh, the goal was not going to get to the ball. So, yeah. Now, there was one last thing I had before we had on you. You brought up Gabrielle. And I was thinking this. Mm. Gabriel and Saliba both play every game. Saka plays every game. Rice. Rice plays every game. Are they tired? Because <laughs> we've seen that over the last couple of games, Saliba looked a little bit off. And now Gabriel looks a little bit off. They're playing through whatever they're playing through. We don't have a true answer to replace either one of them. Saka will play no matter what. We have no answer. He's he's not willing to let Saka sit unless he's really forced. <laughs> you, know, he, you know, like I said, Saka has to be in their dead death's door for him not to play. But I uh, just thinking those center backs. We talk about like Saliba being a reason why we, you know, we had issues. But you know, we needed those two guys to be really good are they that are they at the levels that they that we would like them to be uh, tony you want to say something i guess i i think we're there i think part of yes last week with saliba giving the penalty away yeah you're tired and a lot of that 
falls on the manager. Manager, you yeah. shouldn't be playing League Cup like first round when you throw that in. You shouldn't be playing soccer. You should be resting him. It, it's what it's always used to be was a mix of your squad players and a mix of academy players. But the way Arteta's done it, he might start five or six starters, but he ends up putting the rest of the starters on there. So the only one that might not get on there is the goalkeeper. You might have Ramsdale in there the whole time, but basically you end up there starting 10 out there. And that doesn't work over... And we haven't played that many games compared to City and Liverpool. I think Liverpool's like seven games more than us and said he's like 10 more games so imagine if we had those extra games if we actually you know, for the third straight year make the quickest ex exit out of the domestic cups imagine if we still have those games on this I mean and this, this was a part of it but as I mentioned it earlier I, I think part of it from the fans you, you've seen us we have fourth place showed up. You seen us blow that. You seen us last year. We have first place wrapped up. Then it's kind of unfolding again this year. So the fans are like, fuck it. Let's get out of here. But... I hear you. I hear you. And uh, Spencer, are we tired? <laughs> are yes. our players that don't? Get rest. Very tired, Gary. Oh, you're talking about the players. Sorry. Um, <laughs> no. Nah. Um, I tell you what. I think I, you and I had some interesting discussions earlier today. Um, and I mentioned one player in specific was Karen Tyranny, and given the amount of rotation at left back, you probably could have kept him, and he could have been in a rotation for left back. But you got center backs there that can play it. The question is, are they are they quality enough? And I think. Another one that we mentioned earlier was Urian Timber. If Urian Timber never gets hurt, he probably slots into one of these center back positions too. So injuries have kind of forced the hands in a way. Are the players tired? Probably, but this is why this is why winning championships are one of the most difficult things to do in the Premier League or any any league of football. You're expected to be perfect almost from game one to game thirty eight. And this is why City wins these leagues, because they have the depth, they have the experience, they have the manager to get it done. And you have to learn how to win. So yeah, you have to learn how to manage your body. You have to learn how to manage your minutes. Gabriel and Saliba are always probably going to play every game. Uh, Declan Rice was probably going to play 97% of your games. Saka probably close to 94, 95%. I mean, the the only person I could see potentially getting pulled off at this point for being tired or not good enough at the moment is probably Bakaya Saka. And the problem that you're going to have, Wednesday is going to be a full-strength team, right? We already know the best 11 is going out there, period. Problem's going to be is, is what happens at the Wolves on the weekend. It doesn't, matter. it doesn't matter. Well, I, know that. I, I know that, but <laughs> um, but I think the manager obviously is, is thinking about the game at hand, but he's also yeah. thinking about rotation for the next game too. Yeah, you know what? I, I get I get that. I get that, but <laughs> you're in the game right now. You have a chance to win it. It's nil-nil. It's the 70th yeah. minute. You're making subs to try to get a goal, and the subs that you make for me, I think, hurt you. You know, I think hurt you. And some of them maybe were were required, but okay, if you're not going to go for the, the you know the offensive uh, side of things, you got to go for the defensive then and go strong because it's not like we're not we are playing against a team that is pretty solid. All right, they have the, one of the top scorer in the league on their team. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> the fact that we um you know, I think didn't go strong enough, right? Like, taking off White and Trossard. I would rather have Trossard stay on. 
Big Martinelli on and take and then maybe take Jesus or Havertz off, depending on which one you wanted to, you know, move in to keep in that central central area, you know. And if Trossard maybe play in the eight, you know, that's kind of how I felt like at that point. Because I think you, you kind of kill Trossard to some degree, but you needed something you need to change it up a little bit. Um and then Georgina coming on for Jesus, that may that's okay for me. Uh but Erdogan coming off killed, I think. That killed. Um, Tommy asked you for White. If White is injured too, then that's then that's where for me Kirior has to come on as well. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think yeah. that's for me. So uh, I would have tried to do that. We'll find um, out who's available Wednesday, hopefully tomorrow, yeah. right? Yeah. And hopefully Odegaard, it's not anything serious. Yeah. Yep. 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 Hey. Yep. Go ahead, Tommy. Hey. I was just going to say, Spencer, I've never had this conversation with him, but it's really frustrating to me watching football, and you have no idea what type of injury they say. They just say, oh, it's a uh, ankle, but if you're watching any American sport, you know, it's a uh, fourth degrees terror or whatever. You know, you know what it is. You know what timetable, but... And football, you have no idea. You don't know what knocks you've been carrying around. I mean, you've had Partey that's been gone forever at this point. You don't know if something's going on with him or just the team plans on shipping him out. You don't really know what it is, but just I would like to know what injuries the player has. And you know, I know why they don't tell it is because if you say, hey, his calf is messing him, what do you think the other team is going to do? They're going to target the calf, especially on an injured player. I mean, Tom Brady used to be on the injury report all the time for something random, but <laughs> there is difference between the two, yeah. two the two mentalities. You're not wrong there. Yeah. Um, I know why they don't do it. Yeah. There's, and, a, there's a site, uh, premierinjuries.com. Yeah. And it has like the teams and the status of the players. And the only two players, at least on our side of Jurian Timber, with his potential return in November. Yeah. And um, Martin Erdegor, you know, 25% status. So not really a, um, he's 25% injured essentially or whatever. So he's 75% chance of playing. It's, yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I think he's he'll playing. be fine. Um, hopefully he'll be fine. We'll see. You know, it's all these. You saw all these uh, practice f uh, pictures, right? Didn't see Gabrielle practicing at all, right? Remember that? He started. So yeah. Arsenal like to keep their um, cards close to their chest and uh, see how it goes. But, uh, you know, I've always, I always ask for rotation, but at some point I'm like, if you're not going to do that, then just give me the strongest team. We didn't do that on Sunday. Didn't do that at all. You can't tell yeah. me Zinchenko is a strong you know, like especially like when you, you you check out how things are going and you see Liverpool struggling and see Liverpool lose, and you're like, oof, and like the lineups don't have to be out for like you know an hour or two before the game. You still have time if you want to make a change late, and you go with the lineup he went with, which for me, Havertz in the midfield basically is where it all starts. We can kind of live to some degree with Zinchenko, but. Havertz in the midfield, I think, kills us sometimes. I don't think it helps the midfield like people think it does. It didn't help us against a team without Douglas Luiz. So, um, yeah, I think that that's going away for what's got us on these big runs. I mean, Havertz, like, we've had our most goals scored with Zinchenko out of the lineup. He was injured. But when we were scoring four, we had those four or five games in a row with four goals scored. He wasn't playing; he was injured. And you look at that and you go, "Hmm, interesting, right?" Neither was Jesus. He, he was out as well. So um, I kind of, yeah. I kind of feel you like see that, that last year, but yeah. So I, I kind of feel I look at that and I'm like, "What is Zinchenko doesn't give us the offense, offensive?" Attack but, that we but, need playing out the back. He doesn't help us enough. Like the numbers, the numbers show it. We played our best. We went on it. We went twenty, twenty-two <laughs> goals or whatever it was, and two goals against. 
Maneuver with him out of the lineup. It doesn't matter the teams. For a I mean? very we risk, brought him up, huh? For a very risk averse manager that Arteta yeah. is, he plays such a high risk player in Zinchenko and such a yes. high risk tactic. Yep. Yeah, and we've seen this before, right? We saw Bellerin playing fullback, and you're like, where is he? I just go back to that that North London derby. Bellerin is all the way inside the 18, an yep. attacking third, leaves. Is it holding or Chambers all alone? Yep. And then Partey is trying to track back, and he can't track back. He go, walks off the pitch, which I don't agree with. Gets pushed back on, and Son, I think it was Son scores or whatever. Yep. <laughs> it's like, dude, you've seen this. Isn't something new? You've seen this, and it didn't work. You can't have your full fullbacks bombing up, especially when they bomb up in there. They cross that midline of the pitch yeah. on the other side. Nah, nah the, they gotta, stay, what, gotta stay a little home, stay home a little bit. That's what think. drives me nuts, though. You, you play with these attacking fullbacks, which are essentially wingbacks. You're playing three or four center backs as your back four, why not just set up in the back three and have the guys go attack? That's why you want to do it. Just, instead of doing this weird hybrid, because like I said, two years ago, you would have Granite Zaka drop back when Tierney was going forward. Mm. But now you have nobody there and Gabriel's on this fucking island. And he can't do it by himself if there are not other players tracking him back. You seen that with that goal yesterday. He was on the right side trying to protect it and trying to space a goal. He didn't have a chance. So you, you kind of already are going at a back three, if you want to be honest. If you go look at the actual player positioning maps, you'll see where mm -hmm. it's um, Sleeper Gabriel, okay, whichever side. White's a little bit up, a little bit higher, and then Zinchenko is right up here. And the Liverpool game, Zinchenko stuck to the outside of the lines. You know, yeah, we we'll, we'll beat them. Hurt, so my, my argument is, you can do the tactic of overlapping fullbacks and high, but they have to understand their zones. But you know, so when you're playing all the way over to, you know, if when when Zinchenko as a left back is hanging out with Bukayo Sacco, you know, on the edge of the box of the 18, shaking hands with them, you've lost the plot. It looks like an eight-year-old playing Bumblebee soccer out there. Yeah. Yeah. I was looking at the covered. average position, and Zinchenko mm -hmm. is in line, basically, with Rice. Mm -hmm. Yep. And not far mm -hmm. off, Gabriel. And like, when the other team plays fullbacks, you're attacking fullbacks. There's yeah. that space that's now vacated. There's, yeah, exactly. If you look at that, turn the ball over. Boom, it's open. Yeah, this, this, they just have to kick that ball down the right hand side yeah. of the pitch. Gabriel he comes out. He can't come out because he'll leave the middle of the pitch. And you know? earlier in the season, an attack we're basically playing a back two because he just had Sully and Gabriel there. But I think that's why Timber is better because I, I don't think he listens to our talent. Because he, he stops that five to ten yards before the halfway line. And that's what you want either in a full back or a wing back. You have to be disciplined to know when you need to be able to drop back. So if you're in that position, then, then you can backtrack if you need to. Yeah. But you, you can't backtrack being at the 18 yard box. Or like last year, you would see. Gabriel and Saliba 15 yards past the halfway line and all you have to do is one through ball or just a loft over the guys and have your speediest players run into it and it's just you seem at this point almost five years in that Teta would be a little bit smarter I think he tries to be a little too sneaky with these hybrid formations and stuff Sometimes you just need a little simple. I can I can agree with that somewhat. I can agree with that and, somewhat. We need you know what? It doesn't matter if the other team knows how you're going to play. You know that? We know how it's gonna play, but can you stop it? Most most teams can't. You know what they're going to do. Can you stop it? No. 
I mean, when you're really good at something, it doesn't matter if the other team knows what you're about to do. You, you, you're so good at it, you have answers for everything that they try to attempt. I mean, we see it. The best teams know how. You like know, everybody knew the Bulls are going to play a triangle. Can anybody stop it? Most teams could. You know, you had to wait for a really poor day at the, you know, shooting for the, for you to get a chance, and, and that doesn't happen much. They didn't lose to the Lakers, and they three peat twice yeah. with the same triangle. <laughs> yeah, so everybody knew what it was. You just, you know, when you have the players and you got them in a good position, you just get them to play the best they can. So before we get out of here, I got one last thing. Maybe we can talk about. Did you? <laughs> I mean, yes, we're, we're we're having bad time because we just had our first loss of the year. But uh, Manchester United, they got a little to- turmoil over there. Garnacho liked to post <laughs> from like Mark Goldbridge, <laughs> who was not too impressed with the way that they had uh, substituted. I think it was Garnacho. I guess liked the post. <laughs> I don't know about you, but Garnacho isn't playing next. I know it's part of the, it's part of where things are right now. But uh, dude, you can't do that. Doesn't matter whether the coach is wrong or right. You cannot do that. And uh, I have the manager. I think to so take care of it, but they, they still have such a problem. Where they're sitting there seventh now. And Chelsea wins their game in hand, and Chelsea will be yeah. But well, you know what? Somebody, as somebody, somebody told me today, their game in hand is who? I don't know. What Maybe. team do you support, Tony? Arsenal. Yes. So you think they're going to win their game in hand, Chelsea? They might. You, you think know. Chelsea will beat Arsenal? They can. You think? Chelsea can beat Arsenal. They can, will they? A lot of it will depend on the lineup. They can't beat Arsenal. All right, Tony? No. We won't allow it, Tony. No, 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 no. no, no. The the fact that you actually will not commit to say that we can beat Chelsea is is really... We can beat them. I'm disgusted disgusted with the, the fact that you can't say that. I, I, I know that a lot fans. of negative YouTube has been out there, Tony, and he probably watched a lot of it in the last 24 hours. A lot of nope. these grifter channels out there with all this crap got you thinking you'd go lose to uh, Wrexham right now, right? Nope. Breathe. I know they put six past Everton today. Breathe. It's still Chelsea. And yeah, we still, we've still got to we've got, we've got right the wrongs what Emma Hayes did to Jonas. You count. don't think Arteta's going to right that wrong? Come on. Yeah, but they're, they're, second, they're like second in the form table right now. They're as terrible as they've been. The form they're table. Working right now. What's the form table? Like your last five games. And they just drew to who they just draw to? Was it Nottingham Forest or somebody? Okay. The, Chelsea's not a consistent team. If you play them a certain way, you will get punished for it. Yes, they're young and young gunners. But if you play, we are. I think a lot better team than Everton, a lot better team than Nottingham Forest. Um, you know, I mean, we, it, it got to the 80th minute with no goal scored and we were having a bad day for things to change. I think, you know, more in most cases, based on the way that we play, you get nothing and you like it and we get what we want. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not, uh, it, I, I don't think their game of hand is going to help them. But that game in hand means they can take a loss and they can put, they might still be able to get something out of it. I mean, I think there are two games in hand uh, ahead of whoever is in eighth, but uh, and Manchester United has only got one game, uh, has played one game extra. So, but let's get out of here. It's been a it's been a it's been a good show. Uh, Tony, let the people know, say and then say goodbye. Yeah, Pre- probably will be on Cold Miles on Thursday. Not sure what some health stuff and test staff to have, but other than that, you'll definitely see me here next week and probably Sunday on Arsenal Fan Circle. Cool, cool. 
And Spencer. Uh, I, won't be, I won't be here this weekend. I have to work, um, unfortunately. I have a, a monthly duty that I have to deal with, but whatever. Um, anyway, everybody, breathe, relax. I know it sucks. It's depressing. The world is falling. Everything's going wrong. You're going to lose your job. No, I mean, we lost the game. We're two points out of first. If we're sitting here a month and a half from now and we're eight points out or whatever, then, okay, great. We'll, we'll have those discussions that need to be had. But Wednesday, take care of your business. Make it to the semifinals of the Champions League. Play either you know, Man City or, or Real Madrid. And, and then we'll see where this team's at. We'll see where the, we are in the steps of this process. But other than that, everybody take care. Have a good week. Hopefully Tom's back this weekend or next week. Um, Sam, all you guys. Gary, thanks for letting me come on here and uh, have an opinion. I appreciate it dearly. And uh, even though we don't always agree on everything, we still do it in a civil discourse way. And I hopefully everybody enjoys what we do. And Tony as well, thank you for uh, hanging out and appreciate you as well. There we go. So everybody, yep, thank you for coming. We'll do this again next week. Or we'll hopefully hopefully we'll be talking about once again, I'll try this again. I'll try it this time, Arsenal. Maybe we'll be talking about two wins. Didn't do that last last Monday when I said this, but let's do it this time. We could do it two wins. Um, let's go to um Germany and get a win. I don't care how you do it. I do care how you do I would like you to just do it. I like here we go. We empty we, we like empty in stadiums. How about Germany fans have to go home early because the game is done. How about that? How about we quiet that 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 stadium like we've done others, and and we get out of there and we we you know we get ready for the wolves on the weekend. But uh, first things first, let's get this win. We will be back. Uh, thank you for joining us. If you haven't already, hit the like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in a week. And with that. Life is a journey, don't wait to trip, you're going to